Well, good morning, everybody. I want to thank all of you for your really nice comments on yesterday's video. That really helped out a lot. And I really, I enjoy this distraction. Just staying focused on making a project and showing everything to you is really helping me to keep my mind off of everything else and keep my mind young and active. And this is a very common way for me to work. Once I start a project, even though I don't have my plans finalized, I like to come out to my shop and just kind of assess the situation for the day and kind of work up a game plan of how I want to proceed. And, you know, I still haven't decided if I want to paint this project or just finish it, or I might even stain it, but you know, that's something I can decide a little bit later. Right now, I need to go in and finish up working on those plans. I almost always have to modify my design once I actually start building the project. And sometimes when I get the materials, such as in this case, I these screens that I bought are actually much thinner than I thought. They're only just paper thin aluminum. And the way I had designed these was to make grooves in these panels that I would drop those into. So now, and, and I don't think I can cut a groove that thin. It's like a knife slot it would be. So I gotta figure out a different way of mounting those. And then I gotta do some further tweaks to this design. You know, once I get the SketchUp design done, that's really only half of the design process because what I like to do is bring those into 2D renderings so I can create step-by-step -step plans. And I, I create step-by-step -step plans for giving way, obviously, but really I create them for myself because I work best with an exact set of plans that I can follow and I know the size of every board and how I'm gonna cut it and the entire process of the project. Well, if there is a little bit of good news that came out today, it's that I found out that hardware stores are considered essential stores, so they're not closed. That means I can still get supplies if I need them. And I presumably YouTubers are still essential. I've got a meeting to get to right now, so let me shut the camera off. Okay, I got most of the plans done, and yeah, I'm old school. I actually like to print them out and look at them that way. And one thing that always surprises me when I make plans is how long it takes to design something, and I kind of think, well, this is gonna be a big project. But then, once I start making the step-by-step -step portions of it, I think, well, this is really a pretty simple project. You know, it's like, well, there's some frames to put together and then cut some panels, and it's not that big of a deal. So anyways, I'm gonna start here with these one by three boards, and I'll just cut those down to two inches wide. Whenever I use my miter saw for making cross cuts, I usually get a couple of people in the comments ask me why I choose to use the miter saw instead of the table saw, or that's actually usually the other way around. Why do I use the table saw to make cross cuts when I've got the miter saw? Well. I don't really have a hard and fast rule in that, other than if I have a lot of multiple repeated cuts, a lot of times across the miter saw is just easier to use, especially with this setup where I can just set up stop blocks and just bang them out. The On this project, I've got four boards that are 36 inches long, and that's actually longer then I can set up a stop block on here. It's also longer than I can set up a stop block on my table saw. So it sort of eh, goes either way, but I just think it's easier on this for me to add maybe a little bit of an extension fence or somewhere so that I can get that repeated 36 inch cut. There's only four of those boards I need to make. Well, here, here's what I've done is I've screwed this extension fence onto the back of this wood fence and then measured out this stop block to 36 inches. So that'll work. Okay, so now I've moved the stop block over here so that I can cut the shorter boards. Hey, a little bit more good news. It's raining. We don't get a whole lot of rain here and this year has been especially dry. So this is really good to finally see some sort of moisture.
One thing I'm doing is I'm offsetting these pocket holes. I don't know if you notice that or not, that they're closer to this edge than on this edge. And that's just to allow some room for my uh, rabbiting bit. When I go around and create a rabbit on the inside of this frame, I don't want to hit that pocket screw in there. I've had that happen in the past and I've learned my lesson. It's just one of those things to be mindful of. And here you can see how those frames are gonna look. And the rabbit goes on this inside, on this lower section. So these are the areas that I don't want the router bit to hit. This one here, I can just cut the pocket screws normally. And that's exactly what I did on this. I just centered them on here. I marked an X there just so I would remember that this board is for that top part. A lot of times I like to use glue and pocket screws, but in this case, I don't really think I need to add any glue and because I'm gonna have those panels glued inside of here. and that's gonna give it a lot of strength. As I was measuring out this top brace here in that distance and I was setting it up, I had a little bit of a moment of panic there when I was trying to imagine my printer fitting in this space. It just didn't seem right. So I went up and I remeasured my printer space and I'm like two inches short here. And then I realized, wait a second, these are the sides. This isn't the front of the cabinet. Just a minor brain fart there. I'm back on track. But to be honest, stuff like that is not all that uncommon for me. Once I design a plan and then I start actually building it, I find things that just don't quite work out and I have to go back and modify my plans a little bit. But that's also one thing that I've learned is that I would never design plans for anybody else if I haven't actually built the project myself because there's always going to be things that need to be changed. Even with the plans in my online courses, I always have like the first group of people who go through that course to help me find bugs and little things that I miss because there's just so many you know steps to these projects and that really helps so that I can keep tweaking the plans and getting them better and better all the time. All right, so here's my two sides. Looks pretty good. This piece has a beauty mark. Okay, and now I have these two pieces for the top and the bottom. Well, I was kind of hoping to get more than that done today. I was hoping to be able to route out this rabbit and cut the panel and drop it in, but I had a number of distractions and, you know, things happen. No worries, I'll get back to it in the morning. I'll hit that up on the router first thing in the morning and then cut those plywood panels to size. I always like it when I can finally get to cutting the plywood because it always takes up so much space in my shop and I can finally make some room. And this is what? editing my video is like. <laughs> Sometimes I think I need to get a transparent cat. <laughs> what, Cobra? What? Come on, Kobe.